Do you ever have one of those moments where your friend comes up to you and he goes, Hey, I got a really bad idea. And you're like, Oh, what is it? And they're like, No, 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 no. It's like a really, really bad idea. That was pretty much the beginning context of this particular video. Now, with that being said, though, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy. Now, if you've been having trouble enabling a lot of the recent trucks on consoles, at least from the console mod browser, this thing, in terms of what has been recently updated, may just come to your rescue in terms of fun factor. If you've been looking for something that is out of the norm and different from you, from what you might usually see in the game, but is hilarious to use, you gotta pick this thing up. You have absolutely got to pick up the drivable diesel locomotive on the SnowRunner console mod browser. This thing is absolutely freaking, like, it's so hilarious to drive that I absolutely think each one of you should have it in your console mod library. Now, one of the other really, really cool things about it is the fact that it's tiny. It's like two and a half megabytes because it's directly from the original game and really all they've done is changed up the actual sizes of everything and the performance stuff in the XMLs, but they haven't really, you know, brought in any crazy modeling or anything like that. And so it makes this mod extremely easy to run and extremely easy to download and support. Now, of course, a little bit later on in this video, we are actually going to be attempting to load it onto the back of the r and our wedge trailer behind the r and r warrior aka the gladiator and so definitely stick around if you want to see that but if you have not tried this already you absolutely have to try downloading the monster diesel locomotive and taking it through the obstacle course at the super truck stadium it is by far one of the most hilarious yet entertaining things that I've ever done on the console version of SnowRunner. It's so weird and wacky, but you have to try it. Trust me when I say you will not be disappointed in any way, shape, or form when you attempt this challenge. I mean, now granted, it is completely outside the realm of realism. That This is not realistic at all, but... In terms of fun factor, oh my god, it's off the charts. And can you even imagine what would happen if you and your friends all downloaded this map and all downloaded this locomotive and raced them here at the obstacle course. Now, you can also race them at the racetrack, which I do show a little bit later on in the video, but do be warned that if you attempt to race these at the actual racetrack or the actual circuit, you really have to keep your momentum up really, really well because in sixth gear, you can make the jumps. In fifth gear, you cannot. So if you don't have the exact right line, your run is literally ruined. So you got to just make sure you are constantly on top of everything that you're doing when you're taking these things around that race circuit. Now, the obstacle course, a little bit easier to clear because you obviously have tons of clearance, you have tons of power, you have tons of maneuverability with that ultra-aggressive all-wheel steering, both front and rear. And really, at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, it's way bigger and way longer than any vehicle in this game really needs to be, but it's really sort of along the same lines. I would put it in the same category as the monstrosity. Now, granted, it doesn't have a gigantic, you know, monster mud truck frame, like the monstrosity did and it's not really based on any real life truck as the monstrosity was but it's in the same realm or at least the same vein of of, of crazy that the monstrosity was and sure does it take the game outside of that normal scope of what it was meant to be i mean absolutely but at the same time you know i always go back to this when we talk about wacky crazy wild mods like this and that's that modding was really, from the beginning, intended to be fun. And sure, if you want to mod from a realistic standpoint, that's great. I love that. I love the realistic trucks. I love the realistic crawling maps. I love the realistic haulers. But I also love wacky, crazy stuff like this. I mean, the wacky, crazy stuff like this is what really fills that niche in the game where you just want to go out and mess around with a crazy vehicle and not really have to care about the consequences. That's what this vehicle is for, and that's the target market, really, of exactly why you would want to download this particular vehicle. 
Now, one thing for sure that I'll definitely say about it is you have to make sure that you stick with the off-road tires that are pushed outside of the body of the locomotive. If you go with the tires that are within the body of the locomotive, those are pretty much only good for one thing, in my opinion, and that is loading it onto a trailer because you're not really going to find any trailers wide enough to load it on with the wide wheels, but the thing about the wide wheels is that it makes it so much easier to drive this thing throughout the world because there are so many weird points on the body that can get snagged on trees and rocks and things like that. But if you drive with these wheels way past the body, I mean, the wheels are always going to be the first thing to connect with any objects out in the world. Now, at this point, it was time to convert it to the setup that I wanted to use in order to load it onto the trailer. Now, as we go further on down the list, you can see that the wheels will actually transition up underneath the locomotive as they would be in sort of standard form. Now, you can even use the normal train wheels that are literally meant to drive on train tracks and nobody's really done a map for that yet apart from the train tow but I don't think that ever actually made its way to consoles I could be wrong on that but I believe it did not make its way to consoles so I decided to go ahead and set that thing right there and then go grab the gladiator and make the necessary suspension and transmission adjustments Keep in mind that if you want to replicate this, you really need to make sure that you have the towing setup for the suspension and the transmission. Otherwise, it will not work. It genuinely will not work. Also, as you can see, I was experiencing a little bit of a glitch there with the standard gooseneck where it said there wasn't enough space to attach the trailer when there clearly was. I'm not sure quite where that glitch comes from, but that's the first time I have personally experienced it. However, if you're trying to load something that's this long, the wedge trailer is definitely the better option because it gives you that much more space to drive something onto. And believe me, we use every last bit of surface room on this trailer and then some because that locomotive is no joke in terms of length. Now, it was actually a lot easier to load it up than I was initially thinking it was going to be because I was thinking it was going to be falling off left and right and the width of the wheelbase was not really, or sorry, the track width uh, was not really going to work very well, but with the wheels actually brought in narrower like they would be about the width of the train tracks, it actually worked out very well in terms of loading it up onto this trailer. Now, I moved forward a couple of times and moved back and moved forward. Uh, just here in there a couple of times because I really wanted to make sure that I didn't fall off on the way up and as you can see the results actually were not that bad and I you know it's weird to say the results weren't that bad because I was expecting this to go a whole lot worse the first try than it actually did I even slid back with the e-brake readjusted myself forward and I still didn't fall off and I know that it was not planned at all for this particular locomotive's track width to exactly match with the r, &R wedge trailer but out of all the ridiculously unintentional matches I've ever seen with mods, this is probably one of my favorite unintentional matches because look, it packs perfectly. Now at this point, I was thinking to myself, well, the Warrior's probably not going to be able to tow it very well. And actually, I was extremely surprised by how, how well it actually did tow this thing. Now, you can't really raise the ramps because obviously the furthest rear axle is hanging out over where the ramps would be trying to fold up. So it's definitely a little bit iffy in that respect. And if the ramps kind of slid up under the trailer, that might make it a little bit easier. But at the same time, I doubt they would even do that because there was a packing block um, that was actually put onto the ramps itself. So really and truly, uh, the fact that we're even looking at this setup right now and the fact that it's even towing it and keeping that front axle on the ground is A, a, a true testament to how much this thing can actually tow, and B, I just think the fact that it doesn't seem like a lot of people have thought to try this is wild to me because once I tried it and realized it worked, I was like, oh my god, yes, this is... This is one of the most hilariously fun things to do that you can do in this game. And if you ever want to try crazy combinations, dude, let me know in the comments down below what crazy towing combinations you've tried and what crazy vehicle towing combinations have surprised you. Because I would love, love to know down in the comments below.
And of course, it wouldn't be a trip to the Super Truck Stadium without giving the racetrack a try. Now, I talked about this a little bit in the beginning of the video, and as you can see, I was in fifth gear for that jump and barely made it, and I actually had to winch. But as you'll see a little bit later on in the run, sixth gear is where it's at. Fifth gear is too slow. And right off the bat, I was extremely, like, surprised and pleasantly impressed with how well it handled into the first corner. And then right at the end of the first corner, I completely messed it up. Just done. Threw all of that out the window, and it was, like, it was no good. Let me just say, it was absolutely no good. But right here, this jump in sixth gear absolutely just soars right over it. And so I found that the better approach was actually instead of bumping the clutch all the time, you have a higher chance of the vehicle getting into sixth gear if you just keep, you know, the, the throttle wide open pretty much. As long as you keep the throttle wide open and you let the transmission's brain kind of do what it wants, you'll be pretty much okay as long as you, like I said, keep the throttle wide open and you've got momentum on your side, you'll be fine. Now, running through this section here, I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to go over the chicanes, and I was actually surprised how badly that went. I figured it was going to go pretty well. I figured it was just going to drive right over them, but it got mad. Like, it genuinely got mad, and I was like, really? You're going to act, you're going to, like, act that crazy about wanting to drive over a concrete barrier? And yes, the answer is yes. It is going to act that crazy about you asking it to drive over a small concrete barrier. So... Maybe just one of the, it's either one of the weird um, physics glitches with a vehicle like this, or it has something to do with the fact that I did not have the active suspension in high mode, which I didn't really think about until after I had recorded this, and I was like, huh, maybe it would have been smarter to run this track in high mode on the suspension, but then again, you know, like, they're all lessons learned for the future, so with that being said, we decided to just carry on. Now, this jump right here, probably favorite jump on the whole track, and as you can see on that one, if you've got enough momentum, you'll literally just fly right over it. Now, since this thing is so long and it's just wacky, I decided not to do the tight section over there. I literally decided just to go right into the wall and then go over the corner and go over the jump. And I wanted to see if I could make it over the jump with not a lot of room. And well, you'll, you guys will see how that went. But if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know what some of your crazy fun mod combinations have been in terms of console mods. I hope you guys have been having a blast lately with the game. I know I have. And if you enjoyed the video, once again, make sure to leave it a like. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Subscribe if you're new. Turn those notifications on. And I'll see you guys next time.